Welcome back everyone. This will be my full Star Wars Book of Boba Fett episode six video. Probably the best episode so far. So much happened. There's so many Easter eggs to break down. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. There'll be more teasers for The Mandalorian season three in the Book of Boba Fett finale next week too. And the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, which I'll also be doing episodes for. That'll be the next big Star Wars series and we'll get episodes for that this spring. You won't have to wait that long. Careful for spoilers, if you have not seen the episode yet, there are so many things that we have to talk about. Starting with the episode title, From the Desert Comes a Stranger, which is mostly meant to be a reference to Cad Bane showing up in the live action series, almost killing Cobb Vanth in a classic western gunslinger standoff, very similar to the one that he had with Boba Fett in the Lost Clone Wars episodes, which you may have seen if you're a big Clone Wars fan. That was the episode where they showed you how Boba Fett got the dent in his helmet in a gunslinger standoff moment where Cad Bane shot him. They also referenced that at the end of the episode when he tells Cobb Vanth you should have kept the armor, meaning that he actually knows that he had Boba Fett's armor just in service of setting up a big Boba Fett versus Cobb Vanth gunslinger standoff in the finale. Dave Filoni wrote this episode because he created the Cad Bane character. He also created the Ahsoka character. He wrote and directed the Ahsoka episode during The Mandalorian Season 2. He tends to work more heavily on the episodes involving characters that he created. If you didn't watch the Clone Wars episodes, you have no idea who Cad Bane is. He was the most fearsome bounty hunter in the galaxy before Boba Fett came up. He is the person who trained Boba Fett how to be a bounty hunter. There were a lot of references that Cad Bane had when he was talking to Cobb Vanth warning him about Boba Fett that were meant to be references to his time with Boba Fett in the Clone Wars. When the Empire took over the galaxy, Cad Bane was one of the few old school Clone Wars characters who survived the Imperial era during the original trilogy. He pulled jobs for the Empire, but they never really had any canonical stories about his adventures during the events of the original trilogy until now. But the actual opening scene is Cobb Vanth versus the Pike Syndicate when they come into Mos Pelgo territory where he's stationed. It's the same area where Mando found him during the Mandalorian season two, same town we go back to. There's a lot of references in the episode to the Mandalorian season two episode one and all the scenes with Cobb Vanth in this area. When the Pikes claim that they're going back to Mos Eisley and then Cobb Vanth says pretty much anything goes in Mos Eisley, it's just them referencing all the different major cities on Tatooine. We were also just in Mos Eisley in last week's episode. They want to let you know that the Pike Syndicate is basically taking over the entire planet. They have a classic gunslinger standoff. He kills all but one, then takes the box of spice. Even though he makes all the references to retiring, he just kicks it over, letting it blow away to remind you that he is a good character. Like he's not gonna take a bribe or something like this. He's not gonna keep it for himself. Then they pay off the scene of Mando talking about making the stopover to see his little friend in last week's episode, taking his modified Naboo N1 starfighter to the planet where Luke Skywalker is training Grogu as a Jedi to give him his little Mandalorian Beskar armor. Most of us theorize that it would be a chainmail shirt because of those tiny little ringlets. But the whole idea Mando talks about the armor being his by rights, talking about Grogu as a Mandalorian foundling. My theory during the Mandalorian season one is that the title of the series was also meant to be a reference to Grogu, like the Mandalorian wasn't just meant to reference Din Djarin's character, it was also meant to reference Grogu's character because Grogu is also becoming a Mandalorian. R2-D2 greets him when he lands and he also says the name Skywalker for the first time. He didn't use Luke Skywalker's name during the Mandalorian season two finale. Also really surprised that they physically brought Luke Skywalker back. Now remember, it's a combination of them deep faking this actor's face. The actor who played the New Republic X-Wing pilot in this episode is the person who is the double for Luke Skywalker during the Mandalorian season two. They just did the exact same thing they did during the finale for this episode. So Mark Hamill came back again and recorded new dialogue for the episode. And I do feel like the visual effects for Luke Skywalker looked better than the deep fake that they did during The Mandalorian season two. Like whatever their technology they're using has gotten a little bit better. They confirmed that this is the planet where Luke Skywalker builds his Jedi temple that was later destroyed by Kylo Ren. About 25 years in the future, it's less than 30 years. So it's like 25, 30 years almost. But the funny thing is they still have not revealed which planet it is. They haven't named it yet. So we still don't know where this planet actually is. We see a bunch of spider droids constructing the actual Jedi temple. And the whole idea here is Ahsoka explains later is that Grogu will be the first student at the Jedi temple. But I think they're clearly foreshadowing him leaving his Jedi training, just like Luke Skywalker left Yoda's Jedi training. There are a lot of parallels in this episode during scenes for the scenes of Luke Skywalker training with Yoda in Empire Strikes Back. Some of them are a little more obvious than others. But remember what happened to Luke during Empire Strikes Back. He left to go help his friends. So Grogu is also probably going to leave to go help Mando. 
and that'll probably explain why he survives Kylo Ren's quote unquote purge. There are a couple references to purges during this episode, like you have the Order 66 purge that they flash back to. You also have the Mandalorian's great purge that we just saw in last week's episode. But then they also have Kylo Ren's purge that will be happening in 25 years here. There's also some clever references to that in some of Ahsoka's dialogue too about Grogu being safe on this planet. Like no, we've seen the new Star Wars movies. There's no way that he's safe on this planet. They reveal the reason why R2-D2 shuts off and the spider droids construct him this makeshift bench is because they knew that he might show up and they just instructed R2-D2 and the spider droids to do this should Mando ever show up. But it's all just in service of maintaining the integrity of Grogu's Jedi training. Like they don't want him to see Mando because that'd make it harder for him to leave his attachments behind. Even though very clearly he's going to be going back to Mando by the end of the episode. This is meant to be a parallel for the choices that Mando will have to make eventually too. Like does he become a full Mandalorian again and lead the Mandalorian people using the Darksaber? Does he become the new Mandalore or does he choose to continue his fatherly relationship with Grogu? Like both Mando and Grogu have a lightsaber of their own that represents one path and then another path that involves them continuing to be together. I think that's another reason why they brought Ahsoka back for this episode. There are a couple reasons why they brought her back that I'll get into eventually. But one of the reasons was to foreshadow Mando and Grogu choosing their own path because Ahsoka is another person who left the Jedi training, left the Jedi temple. Even though she comes back to visit Luke Skywalker here at his Jedi temple, she's not coming back to do more Jedi training. Ahsoka is a person who chose her own path and think about how powerful she is. So Grogu, even though he will eventually leave the Jedi training probably, could still go on to become a very powerful force user. And remember, he's gonna live for like 900 years. So even if Mando lives to like the age of 90, that's still a drop in the bucket for Grogu. Grogu could always go back and pick up his Jedi training after Mando dies of old age. Then we actually get to see Luke Skywalker training Grogu and they have that funny scene with him playing with the frogs, force levitating them. It's meant to be a callback to when he and Mando were on Sorgan and he tried to eat one of the frogs with the little kids. This time he just tries to eat one using the force. When Luke Skywalker levitates all the frogs in the pond, it's meant to be a reference to Yoda lifting his X-Wing out of the swamp on Dagobah. Grogu seems amazed the same way that Luke Skywalker couldn't believe how Yoda could do that. That's why right after this, Luke tells him all about Yoda. I love the way that instead of picking him up and carrying him or walking super slow so that Grogu's tiny little legs could keep up, he just picks him up with the force and sets him down every once in a while. When Luke Skywalker starts speaking about Yoda, they start playing Yoda's theme music from Empire Strikes Back. They also play it a couple more times during the episode when they're training and then again at the end of the episode when he offers him Yoda's lightsaber. I know a lot of you will be like, wait a minute, where did he get Yoda's lightsaber from? I thought that he lost it on Coruscant after his fight with Emperor Palpatine. The canon story is that Yoda recovered the lightsaber before he went to Dagobah and then just kept it in a box in his hut on Dagobah. So I think the idea is that Luke Skywalker took his lightsaber with him after Yoda died in Return of the Jedi and he just kept it with him this whole time. There's also a bit of a funny moment where they imply that Yoda was the only one of his kind who spoke in that backwards manner. He would speak in riddles. Have you heard anyone talk like that back home? Because the way Grogu reacts to it like, wait, what? I don't remember anybody talking like that. But also they explain Grogu barely remembers his life at the Jedi Temple on Coruscant until Luke Skywalker uses the force to help pull his memories out. If you don't remember, Ahsoka basically told us during The Mandalorian Season 2 that Grogu had buried his memories deep in his own mind as a way of dealing with the trauma of Order 66 and the Purge which they actually do show us and it's meant to be a parallel for the flashbacks to the Mandalorian's Great Purge. We actually see Grogu's memories of Order 66 and obviously it's a very small contained scene. They don't show us Anakin Skywalker slicing through a bunch of younglings, but we do see clone troopers killing the Jedi Librarian and two other Jedi. I'm not sure which other Jedi these two are, but I think this is meant to confirm that the Jedi Librarian was the Jedi who saved him. They teased this during The Mandalorian Season 2 when Ahsoka was talking about him being saved by a Jedi, but Grogu couldn't remember who it was. He gives Grogu the same Yoda, size matters not speech, because look at him, he's tiny. I can't. It's too big. Size matters not. Look at me. Does me by my size, do you? These brief training sessions along with him helping Grogu remember his original Jedi training back at the temple I think is setting up some boss level Jedi moves that he'll have in the finale and during the Mandalorian season 3. Like each new season Grogu does something even crazier, even bigger. I think they're just setting up even bigger stuff in the future. 
Love the way that Ahsoka surprises Mando napping. When she says she's an old friend of the family, that's because she was Anakin Skywalker's Padawan. She also makes a couple references to Anakin Skywalker later in the episode too, telling Luke, you're just like your father, basically. Just to explain her timeline and how much she knew Luke and Leia, she would have found out about Anakin and Padme's twins during their fight against the Empire in the Fall of the Emperor and Return of the Jedi. But her coming to Luke Skywalker's Jedi Temple would have been the first canonical time she actually met Luke Skywalker in person. I'm assuming that at some point during this time period, she'll also meet Leia if she hasn't already. But like at the end of the episode, Luke says, will I ever see you again? And she says, maybe. That's basically meant to be a yes and also let you know that there'll be more Luke Skywalker cameo scenes like this at some point in the future. When Ahsoka is talking to the Mandalorian about not wanting to mess with Grogu's head by allowing him to see him in person to actually meet, you remember, she has more reason than anyone to want to avoid any attachment conflicts because she still got that PTSD from what happened with Anakin Skywalker turning into Darth Vader, going to the dark side. She referenced that during The Mandalorian Season 2. I've seen what attachments like this can do to a Jedi. And like I said, she also foreshadows Grogu leaving because she says this is the safest place for him with Luke Skywalker on this planet. But we know she's wrong because Kylo Ren's going to destroy the temple in around 25 years. So they really want to beat you in the face with the idea that Grogu needs to leave this planet. But Ahsoka will understand eventually. Remember, she left the Jedi Temple and that's how she survived Order 66. So Grogu leaving is the exact same situation. He survives Kylo Ren's purge later on because he's not there. When Mando starts calling Grogu a Mandalorian foundling, saying that the Beskar armor is his by rights, foundlings are what they call the children that they rescue and then take into their culture. And eventually each of the children, when they take the Mandalorian creed, get their first set of Mandalorian armor. That's what he means when he says the tiny Beskar armor chainmail is Grogu's by rights. And it's not till Grogu sees the Mandalorian's Naboo starfighter taking off that he senses his presence. The reason why he didn't sense it before this is because he just hasn't gained enough skill in the Force. He's still very powerful right now, but he wields the Force kind of like a blunt instrument. Eventually, he'll learn to wield it more like a scalpel, and he'll be able to sense things over much larger distances. You also probably recognize Luke Skywalker's backpack here that he's carrying around in. This is Luke's original backpack that he had with him during Empire Strikes Back when he was training with Yoda, carrying Yoda around in the backpack. I guess he just kept it with him this whole time through everything and it just survived this long. Then they have their version of a Jedi training montage mirroring a lot of the scenes of Luke Skywalker's training with Yoda in Empire Strikes Back. And the thing to remember here is that all the different skills that Grogu shows off, they'll probably pay off and have him do in either the finale or during The Mandalorian Season 3. He learns to force jump, which is a very common Jedi technique. When he starts running through the bamboo forest in the jungle with him in the pouch, it's a parallel for Luke running around on Dagobah with Yoda in the backpack. He also trains Grogu to levitate and balance the way that he did with Yoda balancing on his foot. He even gives him some rudimentary lightsaber training while levitating himself. Then he pulls out the same type of training remote that Obi-Wan Kenobi used to train him during A New Hope. I think him telling Grogu to get back up, always get back up, is very important to remember too. They'll probably pay that off during a future fight that Grogu has. All these skills, all these lessons, they'll pay off in future episodes. When Grogu starts force jumping and flipping all over the place to avoid the drone, it's meant to be a parallel for Yoda fighting Count Dooku in Attack of the Clones, jumping all over the place. You just have to imagine Grogu having a tiny little lightsaber in his hand while this is happening. Then when Luke says that this is more like Grogu remembering more than him teaching, he's talking about all the years of training Grogu had at the Jedi Temple before Order 66. They explained during The Mandalorian Season 2 that Grogu suppressed all of his Jedi abilities, all of his training, and he started to forget the teachings over time, but that was mostly a defense mechanism to prevent Darth Vader and the Jedi Inquisitors from being able to sense him through the Force. Ahsoka tells Luke Skywalker that he's just like his father Anakin Skywalker when he's talking about Grogu not having his heart in training, giving him these sage advice. During the Clone Wars episodes, Anakin Skywalker would often speak to Ahsoka like that. She then leaves the planet saying that she might, she might see him again. And I think that's meant to be a teaser for the Ahsoka series. Those episodes will start releasing next year after The Mandalorian Season 3 and cover a lot of the Grand Admiral Thrawn storyline. It'll be bringing back a lot of the Star Wars Rebels characters too. But I think the idea is that Ahsoka will also probably come back to cameo scene during The Mandalorian Season 3. Mando goes back to Jabba's palace to meet up with Boba Fett and his small army that he's assembled. They explain their battle plan for fighting the Pike Syndicate. You notice they still have the Major Dormo with them. They have him in chains. He's there just giving them advice on how to fight the Pikes. Black Kersantan joined up with Boba Fett a couple episodes ago, so he's been there for a little while. 
Then Mando goes back to Cobb Vance to try and get help from the people of Mos Pelago to be their foot soldiers. He passes the Jawa Sandcrawler. They reveal that they yoinked the Crate Dragon Skull after they killed it in the Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 1. I guess the clan of Tusken Raiders didn't care about the skull. They just wanted the pearl. We also found out they're using part of the rib cage of the Crate Dragon inside the bar just to decorate it. And the funny thing here you all probably picked up on is when Cobb Vanth mentions Grogu like, oh, it's so sad that you lost your little friend there. We both lost something that we love, talking about losing Boba Fett's armor. The way they frame the shot on the Naboo Starfighter, they make sure to focus on the tiny little Grogu-sized pod in the middle. That's just another teaser for Grogu leaving Luke's Jedi Temple and flying around with Mando during the finale. Yes, I do think they will eventually get a bigger ship, maybe at the end of the finale or maybe at the beginning of The Mandalorian Season 3. I don't think that he's going to fly around in this tiny Naboo starfighter forever. At a certain point, it just becomes impractical. Then a lot of the conversation that Mando has with Cobb Vanth sets up the big standoff that he has with Cad Bane. Like Cobb Vanth says, as long as I'm here, the spice trade isn't going to be a problem. And Mando tells him, you never back down from bullies. They also brought back the Weequay bartender, played by W. Earl Brown, the actor from Deadwood and Justified, also two TV series that are westerns that Timothy Oliphant starred in. Because there's this very western vibe going on here, like you have classic gunslinger moments. He tells them they changed the name of the town to Freetown, and to Cobb Vance's credit, even though he resists, he does finally offer the town's help, like, okay, round everybody up that can fight, even though Cad Bane comes and complicates things. He implies that he's been hired by the Pike Syndicate to help deal with Boba Fett to help them take over the planet. When he tries to warn Cobb Vanth about Boba Fett calling him a cold-blooded killer, it's a reference to his history in all of his episodes with Boba Fett during the Clone Wars. Also another callback to the gunslinger standoff that he had with Boba Fett where he gave Boba Fett the dent in his helmet. When he says you should have never given up that armor, it's also a reference to that same lost episode because the armor saved Boba Fett's life because Cad Bane gave him a headshot. But if it wasn't clear, Cobb Vanth is still alive. That's why everyone's yelling about med packs and stims standing over his body and why they didn't have Cad Bane shoot him multiple times and why it's a body shot instead of going for the head. Everyone post all your Thanos memes. You should have gone for the head. This whole Cad Bane sequence is really just to set up Boba Fett versus Cad Bane in a rematch in the finale where Boba Fett will probably kill him, just early prediction. There's a lot of history between the two of them, so I'd recommend if you haven't seen them, go back and watch those Clone Wars episodes with Boba Fett and Cad Bane. Then the whole idea here with the group of Pike Syndicate destroying Garso Quip's cantina with the Cam Tono bomb is just meant to galvanize the people of Mos Espa against the Pikes. Like they really, really want everyone on Tatooine all over the place to hate the Pike Syndicate. You could also think of this bombing as a reference to the untouchables with the briefcase bomb. Like, wait, you forgot your briefcase, then boom, blows the bar up. Also, the droid server here kind of sounded like Anthony Daniels, so it might have been a stealth cameo scene, like Mark Hamill does stealth cameo scenes as other characters that are not Luke Skywalker. Then during the ending scene, like I said, Luke Skywalker gives Grogu his choice, the Beskar chainmail armor or Yoda's original lightsaber. But as I've said many times in the video, Clearly foreshadowing that Grogu is going to choose to go back to the Mandalorian, and they'll explain how he survived Kylo Ren's purge in the future. And instead of Yoda's lightsaber, maybe they'll have him create his own lightsaber eventually, because there is official art that the Star Wars people release of him constructing a yellow lightsaber. A lot of you have also asked if he would just use the darksaber, like Grogu could force levitate the darksaber and wield it that way. His little tiny hand isn't big enough to reach around the hilt though, so he couldn't use it like a traditional lightsaber. And him leaving with his training incomplete, mostly meant to be a callback to Luke Skywalker leaving his training with Yoda during Empire Strikes Back to help Han Solo and Leia at Cloud City. But also Ahsoka, who was in the episode, left the Jedi Temple, left her training before it was complete. Either way, episode 7 next week is the finale, the last episode. They'll have a bunch of scenes setting up The Mandalorian Season 3, maybe like a full teaser trailer, but we also might get a full Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer. So whatever they wind up releasing, of course we'll do videos for it. If you saw any other big Easter eggs in the episode that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. Everyone click here for all my Book of Boba Fett episode videos, Mandalorian Easter eggs, and click here to learn about that brand new Marvel Doctor Strange 2 Iron Man announcement. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and may the force be with you.